Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 20 of my Android development tutorial. Today we're going to talk about fragments, fragment activities, list fragments, adapters, and a whole bunch of other different things. If you missed part 18 and 19 of this tutorial, you pretty much have to watch them, and I provide a link to them in the upper right-hand corner, otherwise you'll be very confused. And of course, all the code is available in a link in the description for this video. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, so basically in the last part of the tutorial we created contact and in this tutorial I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of new things. First I'm going to add an ID number and a boolean named contacted to see if we contacted the person for our census information. Then I'm going to bundle everything up in an array list inside of a class called all contacts. Now basically previously we had census app which is our main Java file or main Java class and then inside of it in census app we had something called activity census app and then that was an XML file and then inside of that we had our fragment container and then we took contact fragment which was our fragment and put it in the container just like that well also what we're gonna do this time is not only create this class called all contacts with the array list but we're also going to bundle everything and shoot it onto the screen using fragment contact list. Now, it sounds confusing, but as I go here, I'm going to go real nice and slow. And of course, the last time, whenever we did all this, let's jump over into the code just to refresh your mind. Here we are inside of census app. This is what we used before. And here I am making reference to the fragment container. And then down here, I'm calling contact fragment to fill the fragment container with my fragment. And if you don't remember where the fragment container is, it is in activity census app right here open that up and you can see right there is fragment container and if we bounce back over into census app and we talk about the contact fragment well contact fragment is up here click on that and here it is and it just contains all of our information in regards to our contacts name street city and phone number let's jump back into the presentation to see what that looks like when it's loaded in the app and there you can see this is what we had previously now we're gonna add contacted and if you can't see this view at full screen it's an HD video so this is what we made last time what we want to do this time is create contact list activity which is gonna have all our contacts from this stuff over here and contact list activity is actually gonna take the place of census app and we're also gonna be making changes to the manifest this this is tutorial is gonna cover so many things it's almost unbelievable and then what we're gonna do is fill this activity with all of our contacts and again we're gonna do that using the manifest but eventually we're gonna do this using a menu system just trying to take this as slow as possible so that's basically what we're gonna do we're gonna edit contact we're gonna create all contacts to store all the contacts in an array list we're gonna create fragment contact list which is gonna feed all of the different contacts into list item contact which is an XML file so whole bunch to do let's get into the code Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do, go into contact.java, and we're just going to start adding a little bit of information that I mentioned previously. So private, and I'm going to create a unique identification number for every single contact, and I'm going to call that ID number, and I'm going to create that here in a second. And I'm also going to create a boolean, and it's going to be called contacted, and I'm going to give it the value of false here to start off. Now inside of our constructor, I'm actually going to create this unique identification number. And this is gonna generate what's called a type four facetto randomly generated UUID. And based off the information I found, if you would make one billion with a B, unique IDs every second for the next 100 years, the probability of creating one duplicate over that 100 year period is 50%. So yes, the chances are this is gonna be pretty unique. And to create it, I just call random UUID, and there we go, now we have our unique identification number. Now I'm gonna come down inside of this code. Well, no use to even do that, let's just stay up here. And what I'm gonna do is create the getters and the setters for these. Well, I don't need to create a setter for the contact ID, but I do need for the other one. Go into source, generate getters and setters. This window's gonna pop up. Yes, I want to be able to change both getters and setters for contacted however for ID number I just want to be able to, to get it that's it scroll down here insertion point I'm just gonna come down here and say there and then I'm gonna come down here and say yes fields in getter setter pairs because that's what I prefer and of course they need to be public and then hit OK and if we scroll down here you can see is contacted yes set contacted yes and we're also able to get our unique identification number 
If I file save that, that's all I need to do. Then what I need to do is go into all contacts.java. This is going to be a brand new guy. And inside of this, I'm going to store all of my array list for all my contacts. So there's only going to be one of them, actually. And that brings us to the point that this is going to be what is called a singleton, which means it's going to be a class that has only one instance ever. And that instance is going to contain my array list. And I'm going to store it inside of itself, all contacts. And I have tutorials on singletons and how they work if you're at all interested, if you don't already know. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create what is called a context. Now by creating a context, we're going to gain access to the current state of the complete application, which is going to mean that we'll be able to get information about all activities from this guy. And also, we're going to be able to pretty much control not only every part of the application, but along with that, we're going to be able to control everything that the app is allowed to access on the device. So I'm going to call this application context because it's going to allow us to pretty much do anything we want with the entire application. Have to get that library, of course. Then, of course, we don't want to forget our array list. And our array list is going to contain contacts. So put in contact. Well, you have to put a bracket in there, of course. And I'm going to call this contact list because that is exactly what it is. Of course, we have to get the array list libraries. And then I'm going to create my constructor. And in this situation, I want my constructor to be private because I don't want people to go in there and be able to generate these. That makes it a singleton. Now it's going to be passed to context and I'm just going to call this application context. And I'll show you in a second how to pass that in. And then we're going to go application context is equal to the application context that they passed in. And we can scroll this up a bit. Also, we know that if somebody does get to this point where they are creating this instance whenever there are no other instances available, well, that means our array list doesn't exist. So we're going to go new array list. And of course, it's going to be of type contact. And there we are. Now that we have that set up, I'm going to create a bunch of junk contacts. So I'm going to say Paul Smith is a contact and later on like I said we're going to be able to go in and actually add contacts using a menu system but as you can see there's just so much to do there's no way I could possibly make a tutorial that covers every single one of those things so I'm going to set the name to Paul Smith spell it right there we go and then Paul Smith is going to be doing some other different things for example setting his street and that's all I'm going to worry about doing right now so set and this is street address and I'm going to set that to 123 main street and then set contacted do we or did we contact Paul Smith and I'm going to say yes true so that's how we would be able to change the value for what's going to end up being a checkbox and then of course I need to add it to my contact list and we can just go add and then inside of here just go Paul Smith and there we go now what we're going to need to do is do this for two more that's enough and I'm going to have Sally Smith and I'm going to have, well, of course, I have to change that to Sally Smith. And then this is going to be 125 Main Street. And was she contacted? I'm going to say no. And then I just need to go Sally Smith and throw them in there right like this. And now Sally Smith is set up. And then my next contact is going to be Mark Smith. I'm just going to think that the, Mar the Smith family all lives next to each other. There's Markle. There we go. And let's say he lives at 127 Main Street, and was he contacted? I'm going to say no, and then I just have to go Mark Smith and throw him in here in a bunch of different places, just like I did with Sally. And there we are. And that is all we're going to need to do with that constructor. That's going to set up our array list, and it is going to create an instance of this guy. And then what we need to do now is to provide a way for them to get a new all contacts. So basically what this guy needs to do, well, first off, it's going to be public and static, all contacts, and I'm going to call it git. It's going to return an all contacts instance, and context, context is going to be passed inside of this. And then what I'm going to do to make sure that I never create more than one of these is to go, hey, does all contacts have a null value? And if it does, well, that means we haven't created an instance of this class yet. So we're going to create one. And to do so, we go all contacts is equal to new and call the constructor from inside of here. And then to get the application global application context, which means, of course, that this context is global to every part of the application, we're just going to go context and then 
git application context. It's pretty easy to remember, even though it sounds complicated. And there we go. Now we know that we got that. And then, otherwise, if it wasn't created, doesn't matter. We're just going to pass back the one we already have. And there we go. And the other thing that we might want to do, or we definitely want to do, is to return the array list if the user decides they want it. So array list, which is a contact array list. And then let's just call this git contact list, like that. And then just return contact list. Not that hard. And there we go. Another thing we're going to want to have eventually is a way to get a very specific contact. How we're going to do that is just go public and of course a contact is going to be returned and get contact is going to be the name of it and it's going to get a unique ID number passed into it and then we're going to cycle through all of our contacts which are of type contact of course and the contact will be our temporary storage box and the contact list that we're going to be searching through is called contact list then as we cycle through this we're going to say the contact which is the contact that's in our array list well i want to get its id number and i want to see if it is equal to the id that was sent over into this method. If it was, we want to return that contact because we found it. And if it wasn't, we're just going to return null just to keep this nice and simple. And UUID didn't show up there, so let's import it. Don't know why we didn't get it previously. There we go. And if we cycle through, we see that everything is set up wonderfully. And we can file save that and all contacts is done. Now if we bounce back and look at our little diagram we have here and we cycle through, we see fragment contact is going to be held inside of the fragment container inside of census app. Only thing is, we need to add contacted to it. So let's do that. So we find fragment contact and here it is. And let's look at the graphical layout. See it says name, street, city, and phone number. But we want to also put a checkbox inside of there. Well, I like to use the graphical layout for a couple weird things. And I know my checkbox isn't gonna take up that much room. So what I wanna do here is go into layouts, this guy right here, and then get table row. And I'm gonna take table row and drag it down here. And then inside of table row, I'm then gonna jump back into form widgets and find checkbox. And I'm gonna take checkbox and drag it down inside of there. So there's that guy. Well, that means I'm gonna to need to go into strings.xml and create a string or what I wanna put inside of that checkbox. And I'm gonna call this contact contacted checkbox. And inside of this, I'm just gonna put contacted. And there that is. I'll save it, jump back over into fragmentcontact.xml, then I have my checkbox selected. I'm going to come over here, click right there, change this to checkbox, and then I'm going to give it the name of contacted checkbox, and then come back over inside of this so I can actually look at the code, and you can see contacted checkbox is inside of there, and the text is checkbox. Well, I want to change that to the more descriptive phrase that I have over in my strings.xml file. So just click on that and then contact contact to checkbox. And there you can see contact it shows up inside of there. And that's all I need to change with fragment contact.xml. Well that brings me to contact fragment.java, this guy right here. And this was the guy that was going to be stored inside of census app as you can see right here contact fragment well since i changed contacted or i put the contacted checkbox inside of here i'm going to have to go in and set up some listeners so that contact fragment will handle everything in the right way so i'm going to come down inside of this guy and here are our editable text areas and i'm going to create a new one and it is going to be a checkbox and i'm going to call it contacted checkbox and then i need to set up the listeners for it so let's scroll on down inside of here. Actually, before we scroll down inside of here, let's go and copy this because we're going to be doing a lot with it. Scroll way down and right here. Looks about right. And I'm going to say contact your checkbox. I need to initialize this guy. So I'm going to go checkbox. And then I'm going to do same thing as I did before when I initialized these guys. So I'm just going to scroll up here and get all that information. The view find by ID. Copy that. Scroll back down again. The view find by ID. And this, of course, is going to be contacted checkbox. If I'll save that. And now that we have that set up, contacted checkbox, I'm going to set up the listener for it. And to do that, contact checkbox, and I'm going to say set on checked change listener. And then I'm going to go new on checked change 
listener. And actually, Eclipse is acting up and acting a little bit strange. So, rather than ignoring that, what I'm going to do here is I am going to show you how to fix Eclipse when Eclipse goes wacky. First, what we're going to do is go up the project, click on that, and we're going to go clean. And then this box is going to pop up, and since this app is what is causing havoc, we're going to hit OK on that. And then I'm going to restart Eclipse. And after a restart, you can see we're no longer getting that little error in regards to having problems finding the contact a checkbox ID inside of our R file. So now we can proceed with what we were doing before. So now throw in our curly braces and then we're going to add our unimplemented methods from on check change listener and that's going to be on check changed and I'm actually going to leave the to do on inside of here. However, what I'm going to do is I am going to say if true change to false if false change to true. And what this to do is going to do is it's going to alert me to the fact that there is something that I need to do or correct in the future. But for now, I'm going to make it very simple. Whenever they check on the fact that they actually met the person, I'm going to say contact, set, contacted. And then later in the future, we'll also provide the option to change that to false if they decide to shut that off. But for now, I'm going to leave it that way just because I like covering that new topic, and that's something I don't think I've ever covered before. And we go, file save, and everything else is exactly as it was before. So basically, at this point, we have contact set up, all contacts set up, and I also reviewed exactly how census app works, how the fragment container works, and how contact fragment is going to properly set up the layout called fragment contact inside of the census app doing pretty much everything that we did previously. Because this tutorial is getting a little bit long, I'm actually going to end it now because I feel like I covered a lot of things. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to cover how contact list activity and all of these other different pieces, as well as our adapter, are going to work to show a list of contacts. Please leave any questions or comments below. And of course, all the code is going to be available in a link in the description. Otherwise, till next time.